Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. In today's video, I would like to show you a series of warm-up coordination drills that I've been using for quite a while with my students at the beginning of the lesson, and they have proven to be very effective. So what these warm-up drills are focusing on are coordination, and we're going to come into coordination definition in just a minute. So they're improving coordination, they activate the right muscle groups at the beginning of the session, and they're improving quite a lot of technical elements, especially on the forehand side with late preparation, which is one of the biggest problems in tennis, and also coordinating both arms. So the other problem is like dead, non-dominant arm. And so when we use these drills at the beginning of every session with different variations, then the player is learning to move in the right way already from the start of the session and that is then more easily transferred in the real play. So you saw the word coordination in the title of the video and I mentioned it before. So to give you a little bit better idea of what coordination is or what definition I like so that then later you can understand better why are we doing the drills the way we're doing them. So I like this definition. Coordination is the process of organizing people or groups so that they work together properly and well and the harmonious functioning of parts for effective results. So obviously we're not organizing people or groups when we're on the court, but we are organizing body parts. So keep that word in mind, organizing. So in tennis we have to organize different body parts in the most effective and harmonious way and what is challenging in tennis is that we don't have much time, so we are always limited by time. The typical ball flight time at recreational level is about 1.7 seconds from one side to another side. And so in about 1.7, 1.8 seconds, we need to organize our body parts in terms of moving to the ball and executing our stroke. And so when this organization of body parts is not right, then the player is going to feel stiff and they will run out of time and they will always rush their shots. So let me give you a few examples of how does it look when players do not organize their movements well and combine movement and hitting the shot and how does it look when they combine it well. So I've set my ball machine there. So how does it look when players don't organize the movements well when they have to move backwards? It looks something like this. So they typically kind of move like this backwards and then they do the shot. So backwards and forehand and they are either not stable at all like this or they are trying again to transfer weight into neutral stance. So obviously you can see there's a lot of time pressure and complicated movements. So much easier would be if the player would do a step back with one foot, so just like this, one step back and spin on the leg. So what I'm doing differently is that I am immediately preparing. So my preparation and the step back are nicely coordinated. So I have enough time and I can play from this position. So you can see that I am much more organized. I am much better organized the movement of my body parts and therefore I'm not stiff, I can generate power much more easily and I don't feel time pressure. So another typical example is when you have to move to the side to play the ball here on the side. So what players do is they're going to move first and then they're going to start swinging so they're moving, racket is in front of them and then they start hitting. So again, you can see that this is not a very efficient organization of body parts or not efficient coordination. So much better coordination is of course if we prepare immediately. We prepare here and we come here and as you can see the movements are much more smooth and I have way more time. And so
So what is the typical problem that coaches and players face? The coaches typically see that the player is not preparing on time. They're telling them prepare early. Uh, but the player does not coordinate early preparation into different footwork patterns. Because we might move left, we might move right, we might move left, we might move forward, we might move backward, and all the combinations in between. And so instead of telling the player prepare early, and hoping that they're going to figure it out how to coordinate early preparation into the footwork patterns. We can actually practice that in the warm-up session. Coordinate preparation, upper body, coordination with lower body. And in that way we are storing the right movements into the subconscious, into the mind. And so that your mind can then recall them at the right moment when you actually play tennis. So all the drills that you're going to see in this series of variations are based on the universal swing that I posted some time ago, where I also uh, feature my good friend Coach Mili, who showed me these exercises. So these are like big number eight exercises. You can just do them with the arms. So if you're not familiar with this uh, number eight swing, continuous non-stop swing, then uh, I recommend you check out that video. So I will put a card above and link in the description. So in all exercises, we want to move the body continuously like this. So there's no set follow through. We want to go here up through the follow through and just smoothly continue into the next uh, move. So the first exercise that I recommend is holding the racket like this, because as you can see, it connects the upper body really well so we are trying to correct the most common mistakes in preparing the forehand like this instead of using the non-dominant arm to coordinate and take part of the shot too so we're doing the exercises with the racket and we're going to do them in four directions forward backward this way and this way so these exercises are mainly focused on the open stance forehand when we go ref left and right and neutral stance forehand when we go forward and so they are not ideally uh, suitable for one-handed backhand because we don't play that much one-handed backhand in open stance but you can use them for the two-handed backhand exactly the same just on the other side because two-handed backhand is much more comfortable in open stance when you have to play it so here's how the exercise looks like we're first doing the the forward so it looks like this. So what's important is that the player feels always that they've prepared the upper body first. So you just stand like this, you prepare the upper body first. You step and you hold balance until you reach your left hip. So this is the loop, my left hip. Then I reset with this foot, I reset and I start again. So it looks like this. Once you do it right, it looks like this. You can see that it's continuous smooth motion. And then we can do it backwards. So right now I have the camera there. I cannot go all the way to the net, but I recommend that for one exercise, you go all the way from the baseline to the net at least three times. So now I'm going to show you on the way back. So again, what is the problem when players are moving backwards? They start moving backwards before they prepare or turn. So in this case, we're practicing simultaneously. So this is the first pivot move. So we go here and we spin on the back leg. So this is usually very unfamiliar movement to tennis players, especially adult recreational tennis players. They're not used to putting the foot back and spinning around like this, but that is the only way we can have power when we're moving backwards. So we go back and we spin and we're trying to keep the loop going. So this number eight loop, try to keep it continuous. And we're moving in this way. So what's very important for balance, so I will continue forward again, is that we hip, keep the head straight because the balance is partly in the ears, in the inner ear. So as soon as we tilt the head or move it around, the balance gets uh, disturbed a little bit. So you can look a little bit at first to to see what you're doing for a few repetitions 
but then you have to fix your head. So right now I'm looking straight in the camera. When you're on the court, just fix your eyes on a pole of the fence or something in the background and try not to move the head much and stay in this upright orientation. So this is forward and then this is backward. So I want to spin on the leg and have good balance. So at first you might wobble a little bit, but with practice you're going to start to feel that you have good balance. So the next movement is to the right. We're going to practice open stance because open stance is in most cases a big problem for players. We have two variations. One is with one step and one is with two steps. So with one step it just looks like this. So again we're practicing simultaneous pivot. So we're turning the upper body and stepping out with the foot like this. And then we just stay on the right leg. So the most common mistake in this situation is that when players do this move, they pull this foot here and you can see that now I'm not stable. So when we're going to play tennis moving to the right, we obviously cannot do like this and spin around. What will happen is that we're going to go open stance, hit the ball. We're going to keep the legs apart like this and recover. So again, this is usually quite unfamiliar movement to players. And that's why it's good to practice it without the ball, without much swinging, just to understand how the body moves, how to coordinate the body better. So I usually explain that I just keep my big toe on the ground. So I'm doing one step to the side, so simultaneously preparing and rotation here. I'm staying stable on this leg. Once I come to this position, I reset and next one and Next one. And next one. The second variation of moving to the side is we're going to do two steps, which I think is probably the most common footwork pattern in tennis on the forehand side. So in reality, it looks something like this. So with this footwork pattern, starting from the middle, we're covering a lot of balls in this area, which is where most of the cross courts go. And so the move is one cross and hit the ball. And so what we're practicing again is that we begin with the upper body and the, the leg must follow. So it looks first like this. I like to do some pivots with players like this because they're not used to this. What they're used to is they're used to running and not doing anything with the racket. And so what helps them get started are a few pivots. And again, we want to head looking ahead because at this moment when we do this the ball is still very far on the other side so we're not looking here at all so i would do a few pivots like this back and forth and then we go one two and forehand so what i like to do is i have the player start on this side and they go across the whole distance so they go like this one two forehand one two forehand one, two, forehand, and like this. So again, once you, later I'm gonna show you movement to the left, you can combine left and right. But if you're just practicing moving to the right, I would go at least three times just to the right, the whole width of the court, maybe four, maybe five times, depending how you feel. So again, if I show you. So when we're starting the crossover step, we're starting with the pivot. One, two. And what I like to do is I like to have the player wait here a little bit so that they check if they're stable, that they're not leaning this way too much or leaning backward too much. So they need to feel that they're stable. And then they execute. And again, don't pull this leg here. Once you do the exercises, you will see that this leg keeps wanting to go there, but you have to stop it. So one, two, forehand. One, two, forehand. And the final movement I want to show you with this variation, so just with racket, is moving to the left. So running around the backhand to hit the forehand. So again, how do players typically go? They're kind of moving like this and try to hit the forehand. So the movements are not organized. They're not coordinated. So what needs to happen if I show in, in reality is this sequence of moves. So the preparation and the 
there's a pivot where this foot comes here and then I step here and I hit the forehand. So that way I'm much more organized, coordinated. Again, I move efficiently, harmoniously and I don't waste time. I'm not stiff and the stroke will go really well. So how do we practice that? We're here and we practice the first pivot. So again, we try to keep the head straight. So this is the pivot that I want the players to get used to. And then from this one, we transition to this and forehand. So the drill goes like this. So what helps players when they're learning the footwork? They don't know how to create any momentum that way. So if you just kind of do it like this, thinking too much about feet, it doesn't go. So think more about getting getting out of the way. So picture that the ball's coming right at you. Sometimes I throw the ball with my hand at the player so that they try and get out of the way this way. So once they're moving their body more dynamically this way, out of the way, then the feet follow much more naturally. So again, it should look something like this, that I move dynamically, naturally. And that way, we are programming a certain footwork pattern and a certain coordination, organization of the upper body with the lower body. And this is going to help you play much more efficiently and effortlessly. So once you're a little bit more familiar with these footwork patterns and the way to move around the court, forward, backward, left, right, I also suggest that you try some combinations. I always challenge the players after a while with various combinations. So the combinations would be forward, backward. That's one combination and then left, right. So I'll show you again with the racket here. So I can practice forward and backward. And I reset and I go forward, good stability. And backward, good control of my body. So forward, holding good balance. Backward, or you can do two in a row. So you can go forward and forward and quickly switch backward and backward. And the other combination is left, right. So I like to do two steps, two steps. So it looks something like this. So in reality, if I show you, it would look normally look like forehand this way and forehand this way, forehand this way, forehand this way. So sometimes it's good to simplify to players. They see too much complication when the racket is in play and one arm. So we do like this, one, two, forehand, and one, two, forehand, one, two, forehand, and one, two, forehand. So you can picture in your mind. So obviously you see that I'm doing this very smoothly. I'm used to these movements. You can picture in your mind that if you can do these movements like this smoothly over a certain period of time, in the warm-up session, they're gonna come up subconsciously without you knowing when you play and you're going to move and hit much more efficiently.